Oh, okay. Now I got this. Other, I guess we are starting now. Hello, everyone. Bonjour. Again, that's sorry. That's, that's my go-to word because I don't know very many other ones, so I apologize. Um, I would like to uh, start out by saying uh, thank you once again for uh, having me here. Um, and I mean, you hear all the, you know, the blah, 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 you know, it's like, I love the conference. I love this city. I love this conference. It is like, I consider Paris like a, the, one of the biggest open air museums in the world. It's like, I mean, the artwork on the buildings, in the parks, just everywhere. It is such a beautiful place to go visit. Every time I've been here, I've seen something new uh, and something beautiful, and I just love it. So thank you once again for having me. It's like I was actually even be able to, my first time, my family's been out of the country. Uh, I brought them here with me uh, to this conference so they could see the beauty of the city, and they have been in all of it as well. So uh, thank you very much for having me. I do appreciate it. Uh, let's start off with uh, my legal disclaimer. Uh, I am not a lawyer, but I have a PhD in Google, uh, so I was able to Google enough about a legal disclaimer to tell you that this is my legal disclaimer. In other words, basically what it's trying to say is, no matter all the bad things that I'm going to talk about or the horrible things that I've done, when I talk about those things and you start thinking, oh, he's mean, he's a horrible person. Remember the kittens, I'm adorable, okay? I will never try to hack from you or steal from you or kill you or destroy you unless you pay me first. There's always a contract. So I'm always a good guy. So when I talk about some of the really bad things, and I'm going to talk about some really bad things, just remember the kittens, okay? So as you can tell, there's a theme to this talk. Uh, it's called uh, Breaking in Bad, I'm the one who doesn't knock. If y'all are not familiar with the TV show Breaking Bad, this is going to be a really confusing and not so funny talk. I apologize for that. But I'm hoping that you understand a little bit about it enough and stuff, you know, so I can still make it a little bit funny. Um, but if not, then my bad. I'm sorry. Basically, what I, this talk is about is I've given a series of uh, talks from my Still Kill Destroy talk, uh, my Stratagems of Social Engineering talks. Um, and they've talked about, oh, I've done this and I've done that and this is where I've gone. And a lot of people can absolutely, because I've been there, I have done these things, and me personally, I've gone, there is no way that actually just happened. So I decided in this talk to do it a little bit different. I'm actually including uh, screenshots from the actual bank surveillance video cameras on the stories that I tell. I actually have video footage that I, you can hear me talking in social engineering, the uh, cleaning lady, uh, into a place in, uh, in, when I'm in this engagement. So I'm actually trying to give uh, actual uh, representation of it. But this is not one of my rant talks. This is my, uh, my, my uh, offensive talks. But I also call it my dessert and vegetables talk. And we'll, it will be made clear why I call it the dessert and vegetables talk because uh, we're going to start off uh, uh, with the dessert and, and with the vegetables. So uh, let's get that going. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, basically, uh, I don't like talking about myself. I'm Jason, it's like I'm a blue team and a red team guy. I do not do red team engagements. That's the most important thing you need to know about me is I don't do red team. I am not a social engineer, ninja, you know, red team wizard and stuff. You know, I put on my robe and wizard hat and destroy everything. Nope, that's not me. Basically, I do uh, social engineering security awareness engagements. It's not my, if my job is not to go in and go, oh, look, I broke all this stuff. I write a report three months later, the employees get a memo about what happened. That doesn't help anybody. What I do is I go in and go, and then I go and I try to teach them. It's like I'll, um, after I compromise everybody in the facility, I'll walk out of the building for two minutes, and then I walk back in with a representative of the company and I spend time talking to each individual person that I compromised, and I tell them, I was a bad guy, this is what I was doing, this is why it was wrong, this is what you should look out for. It's like, I've only not done that once, and we'll talk about that one later, but that's what I do. Because I am tired of people talking about APT. No offense, when? You know, no, no, no offense on that one. But we keep talking about advanced persistent threat, advanced persistent threat, no. Forget that. We talk about some really cool techniques and some really cool zero days, and everybody's talking about we got to watch out for shell shock, and we got to watch out for the poodle, and we got to watch out for heart bleed, and we got to watch out for insert logo brand name here vulnerability. How many sites are getting popped by those versus how many are getting popped because of a phishing campaign or SQL injection on their website? 
So this whole conversation that we're having about all this fruit and stuff, you know, it's like we talk about, well, let's, we got to go after the low-hanging fruit. I say screw that. The fruit's no longer hanging low on the tree, people. It's on the ground spreading roots. Go after that, okay? Stop trying to go. We, we've already realized we can't accomplish low-hanging fruit. Get the stuff off the ground first. Then let's work up. Let's set our expectations a little bit lower. So I decided to create my own term to sort of simplify this. I just want to be bad. Basic, adorable destruction. I will totally destroy you with very basic little input or technical know-how, and I'll be adorable doing it because that's how I roll. So that's what I'm talking about. What are some of the key indicators of someone being bad? Well, step number one is recon mode. It's only about two hours on Google or the victim's own website, though I've never used the full two hours yet. I've never used two hours fully to recon a company or an institution before I try to attack them. I've only, I've only done under two hours each single time. One time it was less than 20 minutes to get enough information for me to create a successful attack and campaign to let, that led to actual full compromise of the company. Uh, number two, SE mode is usually walking into the victim's location and winging it. Note, sometimes without doing number one, you're actually going to see uh, video screen captures of me doing that exact thing, uh, where I walked in blind and I was able to get in. Three, ponage mode is basically plugging into the, the device into the victim's computer or network, sometimes with their help. Not because I really need their help, I just think it's funnier that way because, you know, they're the ones that help me compromise them and ironic. So uh, four, five, profit. I think that's the way it goes. So let's go with that. So let's break it down to the three best approaches I've used to be bad. And quite frankly, the one that I use the most because it's, it's more comfortable with me is I go in as the tech or the repair guy, the delivery, the job applicant, customer, or I just wander in. I've got no cover. I'm just, I wonder where this door goes, you know, and just walk in. Um, also, uh, one key caveat, though, when you go in as a tech or repair person, we'll talk about this a little bit later, too, it's like um, you do not go in to a company disguised as a plumber unless you know how to plumb. Okay, because you never know when something's broken. It's like, oh, you're the plumber. We just called you. Oh, you're the cable TV guy. We're having problems with our reception. You better know how to do that because you never know when that thing's going to happen. Uh, number two is the auditor. It's like in the tech repair guy, I call that the passive. Step number one is more passive where it's like I'm asking for your help. I'm asking you to help me do something. I'm trying to fix something. I'm here to, to be of service to you. Number two, I'm the auditor, I'm the executive, I'm the policy enforcement, I'm more the authoritative figure. You're here to help me. It's like there I'm a little bit more rude, it's like a little bit more aggressive, it's like I need access to this door. We're doing a surprise inspection. What part of surprise do you not understand? Open the door please for me now or you will be in the report. Usually I'm wearing a suit and that makes me angry, so that helps with that. So it's like whenever you, have to, whenever you see me in a suit, in a tie, it's not, no one's going to have a good day. Okay, everybody has a bad day that day. Uh, okay, so number three is crazy off the wall personalities. Not rock recommended because you know they're off the wall crazy, but they're totally fun and you know, usually they work. And I mean, I have broken into places in Teenage Ninja Turtle pajama bottoms and a t shirt barefoot, several locations quite successfully. It's pretty freaking awesome. I have stolen a car wearing a shirt that says, I'm a liability on it. So it's like, I mean, I like to come with warning labels. It's like I broke into a building one time in New York City with a shirt that said, your company's uh, computer guy. So it's like, uh, but the, hey, it works, it works. So another part of this talk we're going to do is the next uh, uh, three sections is like, we're going to talk about, um, I'm going to give you a story from each one of those personas. It's like, I'm going to give you one from the repair guy, I'm going to give you one from the authoritative figure, and I'm going to give you one from off the wall that no way this should work. And I picked for these three stories, three different financial institutions in three different countries to show you, because you know, why financial institutions? Well, it's where the money's at, right? So they should have a better, and also where they're regulating, where they should have more security controls because you know, they're dealing with money. So let's go after those guys, and then we're also going to talk about the results of that. 
Uh, and then the second half, we'll talk about what we can do about it. So let's start off with the first talk, uh, the first section. It's the, uh, this was a great hacker strip that uh, they did for me because it was just such an unbelievable story. It actually turned into a comic book where I was tasked to break into branches in Beirut, Lebanon. It's like they wanted to see what damage I could do, how I could steal and stuff, you know, in Beirut. I speak no Arabic, no French, obviously, as you could tell, how I murdered Bonjour even. It's like, uh, and I don't blend well in Beirut, Lebanon. It's like this accent does not say anything else but Texan. So, uh, but there was like, yeah, try to see what you can do, see what you can get in. So I was like, sure, let's try this. So uh, what I needed to show is how I could go in physically from a real world perspective and create online damage. That's the whole thing about social engineering. I'm trying to get the physical world to interact. And so my whole goal was to say, this is how I could steal millions of dollars from you on your computer systems and do a wire transfer just by walking into your branches. And they, I, I will tell you right now, nothing against the, the people, that, my clients, but they were a little skeptical. Like in, yeah, whatever, have fun with that. And I did. I had a lot of fun with that. Because as you can tell from the bank's own surveillance footage, from the time I walked into the door, the full access to the bank was two minutes and 22 seconds. I had never been in that bank before. I had no idea whose name was who for the managers or the employees. I've never seen the place. This was a bank that the driver drove me to. I had no knowledge of where I was going. And from walking into the front door, wearing a DEF CON leather jacket and red Thundercat tennis shoes, warning labels, full compromise of the bank. And when I say full compromise, I mean full compromise. One of the customers was depositing $200,000 in cash right in front of me while I was working. I have flawful business is really good there. I'm not sure, I'm not judging. So it's like, so that was what I was doing. I went in, first, the first thing I did was walked in. I walked in just like I knew where I was going, walked down a hallway, saw the bank manager. So like I get in, see the bank manager, and I stop. I do my little half step, and it's like and I'm waiting out this door. I wait for 30 seconds. He doesn't know I'm there. Everybody else assumes that I'm talking to the bank manager. After 30 seconds, I walk to the first door beside me. It's another executive. I talk to her, and I say, hey, I'm with uh, headquarters with uh, computer IT. We're working on the computer. I'm trying to check your USB policy rights to make sure the GPO stay, that the USB write, read write policy is enforced properly so the TCP iPad won't stack, and there won't be a reorganization of the uh, NetFlow. She's like, okay. So, yeah, so I need to plug in this uh, USB drive. Don't worry about the rubber ducky on it. Just let me plug it in real quick. Boop. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, that command prompt. Yeah, let me take a picture of that real quick with an actual camera. Click. Okay, cool. Thank you. And then I go out and I go to the next one. I'm golden now because they see me talk to the manager. They see me in her office working. And I go to the next place. Yeah, I'm here doing the uh, IT computer support, blah, 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 blah. Let me in. And we start working on everything else. And the best part about this is when the manager did come out, he's like, Oh, yeah, the computer. We're having a problem with the computer. Can you come look at it? Remember about the plumber? And I was like, I've done desktop support. So I said, sure. I walk over there and I'm like, sure, let me get this. And let me get, I said, you know what? Let me get you a new one of those. It's like, well, I'll just get you a new machine. It's fine. It'll be no problem. And his eyes lit up like it was Christmas. He's like, we got a problem with our scanner over here. And I'm like, so let me go over to your scanner. Oh, you're, let's, let's get you a new one and stuff, you know? And he's like, we got some screens. It's like over, I said, dude, you know what? We're doing a whole refurb of all the, all the branch offices, and that's one of the reasons why I'm here. So we're going to be putting new equipment in all the different branches. Yours, obviously, because I've been to all these other ones and stuff, you know, yours is the one that needs the most improvement. So I'm going to give you the first uh, go at it. So you'll be the first one to get all new equipment all throughout your branch. And he's like, oh, and it was awesome. And so it's like I finished doing the compromise. I finished, and then the worst part happened. Because remember, I have to come in after two minutes after successfully going out. And, I, and this one was so bad. The compromise was so bad. I literally had to wait till the branch closed so I could get everybody together. And the executive was speaking in Arabic just to make sure they perfectly understood how horrible this was, okay? How horrible this went down. It's like, and I explained to them what was going on. And I told them why I was a bad person and what I was doing was bad. And then halfway through, the bank manager 
raises his hand like a grade schooler, like, and I'm like, yes. <laughs> it's like, do, do we still get the equipment? And I was like, no, I'm a horrible person. I was being bad. I lied to you. And it was like, I felt like I kicked a puppy. It was really bad. I felt like I kicked a puppy. And it's like, so, uh, so that went on and stuff, you know. But some of the other things that we did while I was there, because remember, I want to do a wire transfer for some money, right? So what I do was, and by the way, as you can tell from the timestamps, I was there for over 20 minutes uh, without being stopped. But you see that guy in that really flashy sweater vest? He was awesome. Because during my support, he gave me his employee ID. He gave me his uh, password. And they had small sun oracle boxes that have smart cards because they were really good about security, sort of. It's like, so it's like they needed a smart card and a user ID and a password to get in and you had to be on their internal network. So I got his smart card from them. Well, so now I needed their PC and I needed network access, right? Well, I want it to be difficult. I don't want it, I mean, anybody could, I could have gotten all that right there. But what's the fun in that? So after getting the password and the ID and the smart card, I decided to go to another branch. And I walk in straight to the break room. It's like, because that's where the hallway led. I didn't know it was there, but it was like, well, since I'm at the break room, got a little cup of water, you know, poning people is thirsty work. I was a little parched. They took a little bit of water, waited for about a minute. And without saying a word, I did not say hello. I did not say goodbye. Though I should have said thank you because while that guy was conducting work, I just unplugged their computer and took it with me. Out the door. So now I've got a smart card, I've got a password, I have a user ID, I have their computer. One more thing, right? So let's go to another branch and get their network access when they let me into their network closet. So I showed from three different visits in the real world, I was able and capable of able to do online transactions and steal their data uh, from their computer networks. Zero research or recon. Just being adorable. So that's how that goes. Now the next one, I was asked to do a compromise for a state treasury in the United States. You know, all 50 states, they have their own treasury for their own economy and stuff, you know, like that. So I don't know how it works. I just know how to steal from them. So uh, I, I don't want to tell you how it goes works, but it was a state treasury. You think it was a very secured building. And uh, they wanted me to go in because they had already shown a problem with their internal network. They were like, well, we want you to see how good you would be able to physically get into our locations because our locations are secured because we deal with the state's money. And I'm like, okay, sure, let me try that. And I look at their headquarters, and their headquarters were locked. I mean, locked down tight. It was some secure stuff there. You know, the, 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 the coating on the windows, so you couldn't really see in very well. The, uh, the man trap doors, uh, lo uh, lobby ladies and stuff, you know, in the lobby area with like two different doors. You had to go through her. They had a security guard that they paid extra to look mean. It's like, I mean, this was a really secured building. I did find a way, though, for the record, I did find a way to get in, because if you've gone into the basement where the cafeteria is, there's a storage closet, and there's a dumbwaiter that they haven't decommissioned that you could actually climb up that shaft and get into the first floor and get into that building. But I did look inside, and I saw spiders, so therefore it was unavailable. I had no flamethrower. So uh, I was not able to get in there. It's like, that's part of the job. It's like, you know, bob wire, you know, uh, machine guns and spiders. You just can't overcome those obstacles. So, um, so I just, okay, I can't get into the main headquarters. But that was okay because they had another uh, branch. They had another little office in an office building in a suburban part of town with a direct connection into their internal network. So sitting in that office space was like sitting at their desk. So this is where scope comes in. Because everybody knows about scope, right? Here's an attacker's scope. This is how an attacker will attack you. They will throw the kitchen sink, right? It's everything, everything out for it. 
That scope, that's the scope you work with when you're an attacker, when you're a bad guy. Now, when you're talking to your client and you're telling them, this, like, well, what kind of scope do I have? It's like, we want you to attack us just like an attacker would. And your eyes light up, and then they go, but we're only open Monday through Friday, so can you do it between Monday and Friday? And you're like, okay. And they're like, well, yeah, but we do a lot of transactions uh, before 5 p.m. Can you come in after 2100? Okay. And they're like, well, we don't want you to mess with the production servers. Can you, can, we, we got, hey, we got this developer server that's available. Can you, can you go after that? And they're like, okay. And can you only go and make sure that you know when we're going after? It's like, sure. Now go after us just like an attacker would. Notice the problem here. So this is my scope now, right? Well, with them, they decided to make my scope this because they were very unhappy that they were already compromised. So they said just a couple things. I had to go to the office building after 5.30 at night after people were leaving. I could not talk to anyone coming in or out of the building because they may not have been in state uh, treasury employees. So you can't talk to anybody to let you in. And I asked about my, my hacking, I, I like my, I'm not really good with the lock picks, they're very delicate, very hard. To, so I told them most of my lock picking tools are either paper airplanes, cardboard, or sledgehammer. And they said I couldn't use any of those. So that was unfortunate. Uh, so um, I had to find some way to get in without damaging the doors and or asking someone to let me in. But if I did get in, yay, it's like I had to stay in the public area though, in the lobby, till someone, uh, till I could hear the cleaning lady. Because the only person I was able to talk to is the cleaning lady. And they were like, yeah, but you know what? The cleaning lady's not really our employee, so you can't lie to her. You can only tell her the truth. But yeah, do all that and see what happens. We wanna know, attack us like an attacker would. So how did that work out for them? Well, let's. See, this is my nose cam. And we're recording. Okay, need a little bit? Right. So here we go. Here's me walking to the first door. I'm using my spy camera that I usually carry when I'm on an engagement. It's a nice little, looks like a Rolex. It's got a high def video camera in there, but you might get seasick. So I'm trying the first door. I'm not able to get into it. Really regretting the part about not being able to use a sledgehammer because I'm very effective with that. Not even a crowbar. I'm really good with crowbars. You should, you should see me work sometimes. So here's the best part, because this is the longest part of the whole compromise right here, is me walking to the front door. It's also a good chance to get a drink, so. So, oh yes, I'm still walking. Okay. So I get to the front door. Eventually. Like I said, this is the longest part of the whole compromise. And I tried the door. Bummer. They've got locks. Who would have thought that they would put locks on an office building door? And so I now stand out, take out my magical hacking device, known as a smartphone, and I start looking around like I'm playing something or talking to somebody. She walks out. Notice, not at any time did I say anything. I love these things. I compromised over 12 floors in an office building one time that had every floor was secured. It had a door after you get out of the elevator lobby, it had a secured door. Every single time I actually was there, right out in front of them, not even playing Angry Birds because I was borrowing a friend's phone, I was in a different country so I couldn't even play Angry Birds. I was just like acting like I was doing something productive until someone walked in or someone walked out and then I just went and went right in after them. Every single time. So, very good hacking device. So now I'm inside. Now to set this up, I was in there for two hours in that public area, in that lobby. You have to understand how bad my ADD is, okay? I was there for two hours. My bad, I can only play so much Angry Bird and tweet and do Facebook posts for so long. My battery was like at 2% when this was over. So I'm there just trying to amuse myself until finally music to my ears, I hear a vacuum cleaner. 
It was up on the second floor, but it was freaking close enough. I needed to get going. I needed to do something. I was going crazier than I am. So let's go. So let's go there. Now I'm going to try to pause this at the right time so you can hear what I'm saying. Because I am only telling her the truth. I am not lying to her. Hello. Hi. I'm in, uh, trying to get back in the suite. I'm trying to get back into the suite. I was there the day before when they had me to look at it and stuff, you know, and see it. So I was actually there before. I am trying to get back into it. That is truth. Could you let me in real quick? Yes. Downstairs? No, no clean. Me, no. Could you let me in? I can't get in. It I can't get in. No crowbar, remember? Like I, I just went to the bathroom and I didn't have my badge. I had just gone to the bathroom. I was there for two hours, people. I was thirsty, okay? It's like, and also, I didn't have my badge. I have a legitimate company badge. I didn't say it was for their company. I just said I didn't have my badge, which was true. Could you, could you try? Thanks, I just, I just gotta do one thing real quick. Destroy their network. Working too late. <laughs> I'm on the clock and I think that laugh is adorable, don't judge me. This also is the longest part of the compromise, walking to the target. Thank you. You need the key? Huh? Yeah, I, I don't have the key to get in. Oh, Which I don't. Yes, I, I come in. Go oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> so there we go. Now I'll try to fast forward because it takes a while for her to get back. I am recording this, so. Okay, I'm talking to someone on the phone. Right, right. Yeah, she's got the key. Okay, I'm good. Thanks. Bye. Now, that's very important. Even if I wasn't talking to somebody, if, so, if you ask someone to go get something for you or authorize for you to, to go uh, let you in somewhere, always be on the phone. And when they show up, you say, oh, no, no, no don't worry about it. No, it's okay, sir. It's like, uh, she, she just, she's, she's got it. She's going to let me in. It's like, because what does that show? That makes them think, oh, well, someone else was going to let him in anyway. I might as well just do it now. He's got authorization. It's just, you know, dealing with human nature. Thank you. Okay. You and there I am. I did not, okay, I have to admit, I lied once. You didn't hear that part, but I told her I'd see her later, and I didn't see her again. Okay. But that was the only lie. Everything else, 100% truth. And I got into their building and into their city and, and into their, uh, the state treasury. It's like, so it's not going to save you to put scope. All you're doing when you've set scope for a client and you're making it unrealistic or you're trying to change how your outlook is going to be, okay, understand attackers are not restrained by that. You're not going to see a real picture. You're going to see what you want to see. So you have to make sure when you're talking to a client, if there has to be a scope, if there's certain servers or certain things that, that need to be done to keep the system up and running, that's fine. But if they want you to be attacked like an attacker, then you have to let them know, then you have to give me the means to do that. So that's one of the things when you're coming across a client. Now the next one, this, is, this one is just... If I've already compromised you, I usually on a three-day engagement, I spend two days destroying you, and I spend the, uh, the last day educating you. And also the last day, I also like to have fun. I will come in in some of the most ridiculous uh, personas, the most ridiculous acts. Uh, I'll come in, uh, I mean, just, just ridiculous. And so this one was one of the best ones. I was in uh, Jamaica, 
uh, in Kingston, Jamaica for a financial institution. I successfully compromised them for the first two times. But then they were like, well, we want you to come in uh, to our main headquarters and come and get us. And that led to this. And I also call this story the Jason and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad social engineering engagement. Because I really, really, really felt bad about this one. And I've done some really shady things, people. Some of they've even paid me for, okay? This was one of the worst. So basically, it was a target of a charity organization. Uh, uh, the financial institution had a charity organization that was connected to the same network. I actually spent an hour and 45 minutes doing recon uh, on their website and Google to find this out. It was the longest I've ever done recon for. And so what I decided to do was, oh, I went in as an American TV producer from Hollywood who was going to put them on television for all the wonderful work they do in the community because they actually did a lot of great work in the community. So I was like, yeah, I'm, a, I'm the TV producer. So I had my guy go and say, hey, it's like a, a, the, the local person went in and it's like, we have a producer from America. He was talking. He wanted to uh, hear from you. Let me put him on the phone. So he put him on Hey, how's it going? I'm just, I was just having dinner with somebody, and he said that it's like uh, about your organization, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's spectacular. You guys are totes legit. I need to put you on this television show. I fly out at 6 a.m. tomorrow and stuff, you know, so I got to meet you today. Is there any time I can meet you today? 2.30, uh, 3 o'clock? It's like, hold on a second. Cancel my 2.30. Yeah, no, 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 he'll understand. Just cancel. This is more important. Okay, I can make it. I'll be right there. That sounds awesome. Hang up. I show up to the main headquarter building. So I get to the main headquarter building, and it's like, and I get in, they've got like man traps upon man traps, right? The lobby was a man trap. So it's like, you got to be buzzed just to get into the lobby. The, the, the lady's got to go, okay, you don't look too sketchy. I'll let you into the lobby first. It's like, you get into the lobby, say, yeah, I'm here to talk to this charity organization. They're like, okay, cool. That's the next building over. And I'm like, oh, really? My bad. Uh, hey, you know what, I, can I use the restroom? It's like, I always need to use the restroom. It's not all the Pepsi I drink, I promise. I just get lost finding the restroom. I mean, I've actually been in a building one time for two hours trying to find that restroom. I never found the restroom either. I found the employee entrance that I was able to compromise and get back in later, but it's like, I never found that restroom. So it's, I was like, and they say, sure, you can go to the restroom. Security guard, you know, like, mm. he opens up the door into the internal lobby and like walks with me. And I mean, I literally thought the guy was gonna follow me into the stall. It's like, so I was gonna think fast and I really didn't have to go, but you know, if he would've gone in, I probably would've went. It's like, so he, he, he stands out at the door, thank goodness. And now I'm stuck in the restroom and one of the few times in history, I didn't really have to go that time. So now I just gotta stand there the legitimate, you know, the, the right amount of time it, it would take. Then I had to go over and wash my hands because I didn't want them to think that I was unhygienic, right? And stuff, you know, even though I didn't do anything. So I wash the hands, do the blower dryer thing, and I'm like, and I walk out. And as soon as I start turning the corner, I look at the door, and there's the guard. Guard's right there, like, I. So I'm like, and I'm going this way. <laughs> and I go right back to him, and I go back over to the other area. So now I talk to this lady at, at the charity organization. And I talked to her for about five minutes. I told her what I'm doing and what we're trying to do, incorporate their show. And then I immediately go, say, hey, do you have a, uh, a, a corporate executive? I'd love to talk to a corporate executive. And she's like, sure. It's like uh, the, the, the board of directors is here. It's like, awesome. Can I talk to him? Take me upstairs. I start talking to him about how I'm going to put them on TV, how they're a great charity organization, how we need more shining beacons of light in the world and stuff, you know, to, to be uh, spotlighted in television for these things. And uh, I told her, you know what? I could tell you all the different things I'm going to do and all the different, but I've got on this USB drive, yeah, with the one with the rubber ducky. It's like, I've got, I've got this USB drive. Uh, I've got a video from one of my episodes, and I can just show this on your computer. Let me plug this in real quick. Sure. Plug it in. And I start getting these weird error message. I really think that my malware was trying to fight with the malware that was already on this guy's computer because he was totally owned. Okay, so it's like, I really think there was a uh, combat of like malware. It's like, so I get on and start, the messages pop up and I'm like, oh crap, how do I explain this one? And then the guy's like, really wants to see this video, right? So he calls his desktop support people. And the problem is, is that they're third party contractors. So they're not in scope. 
And I'm like freaking out, like, no, 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 I'll email you the clip. Just hand me the USB drive. You won't give me the USB drive. It's like, no, I'll, call, I'll send you an email. No, no, he's got to see it now. He's the board of directors, right? So he hands it to the, the tech guy. That's very distinct, okay? It wasn't my fault. He gave it to him, okay? That, let's make that clear. I didn't hand it to him. So he hands it to that guy. And 90% of all social engineering is thinking quick on your feet. So as soon as he hands it to him, I go, you know what? There are a lot of other movie clips in other folders on that drive. So I've got to go with them so I can see what movie he's going to and stuff and, and show you which one it is because it's like you can't see all the movies that are NDA. And he's like, okay, cool. So I follow him. I really have to go to find out what machine he plugs it into so I can list it as one of the compromised machines. So he goes and we walk into his little office where he's like a domain admin for that company and all his other clients. And he plugs it in and I'm like, and he plugs it into an Ubuntu box. And I'm thinking, oh, great. It's an Ubuntu box. It's like my malware was written for Windows. It should be fine. And that's when I realized something really cool. Ubuntu wine emulation is really awesome because there's the code running on his Ubuntu box. So now I've got domain admin on that company and all the other clients that he owns. Yay? It's like, so I get that back. He still didn't find, a, uh, he still didn't find the video clip, but I got a nice little command prompt, and I took a picture, and, you know, it was weird. And so then I go back, and it's like I sit back in the office, and this is the worst part. And I'm not even joking. This, I spent 15 minutes talking to these wonderful, sweet, adorable, kind hearted people and explain to them how they were going to be on TV. I mean, this lady gave me a copy of her book. She's like the Mother Teresa of Jamaica. She gave me her book. I still have it on my shelf when I feel really sad. I'm like, yeah, I'm a horrible person. It's like, and I mean, halfway through people, I was believing it. I mean, I was like, okay, this is what I see, okay? What we're going to have is we're going to have one lady and stuff, you know, one of your employees, she's going to be sitting at her cube, working at her desk, and we're going to have like a whole call center, and we're going to focus on her. And then we're going to pan out, and then we're going to transition through the rest of the, uh, the, the, the call center, all over, sweeping over all the other employees, and then it's going to get to the glass window. And right when it gets to the glass window, we're going to do a blur effect, and then it's going to transition out to the streets of Jamaica, and you see a, a destitute neighborhood, and it's going to sweep over further to a street where there's a little girl and right there is that same worker who was there on her computer, there she is feeding her. And so it shows how your work, how your efforts and your corporation and your financial institution, how it actually translates to the direct impact of helping the people of Jamaica. It's going to be a great, I really thought it was a great show. It's like, I mean, it's like, it would be really good. It's like, so I have to spend all that time. So I get out of the, uh, I get out. It's like, I'm done. And I thank them, and they thank me, and I, I thank them for the book, and I'm trying not to cry on the inside. And I walk outside, and I wait there for two minutes. Wait there for three minutes. About five minutes, my driver, who knew the routine for the last two days, that it's like two minutes and I go in, drives up to me. And he's like, Jason, are you going inside? And I'm like, no, I feel too bad. <laughs> I can't tell those wonderful people what I just did to them. <laughs> and I, for the first time ever, I actually had to call the client going, yeah, you're going to have to tell them what I did. <laughs> I was bad. I can't do it. It's like, and I had, to leave, I had to leave that to the client. So the outcome was total compromise of the entire organization and the target company, but I did feel really bad pulling them so harshly. So that was a total off the wall. Now, what did all these have in common? Human nature. Human nature. It is easier to uh, believe the convenient and happy lie than the uncomfortable truth. Human minds are not wired to think worst case scenario every time. That's why I've got a wire loose, because that's usually me. But not everybody. It's like, hey, I'm going back home in a couple of days. Our plane will probably crash and we'll die in the Atlantic Ocean, me and my family. But, you know, hey, whatever. It's all good. That happens, you know. C'est la vie. It's like, oh, I'm going to work today in the office. Oh, oh, asteroid. Probably take out the building. But, you know, it happens. 
No, we don't think that, right? Oh, look, this weird-looking American dude's coming up with the USB drive. Oh, he's obviously supposed to be working here. What would he do wrong to me? He looks adorable. You know? We want to believe the lie because we don't want to accept the truth. And that's how social engineers go after human nature. So what can we do? Well, that was the dessert, people. Let's go to the vegetables because what we need to do is do better at information security and better training our employees and getting them prepared for those kind of attacks because they're not going to decrease. The better the blinky box gets, the better the technical controls get, the easier it is to circumvent the eighth layer in the OSI model, the eighth layer being the human layer. It's like, I don't care how great your blinky box, firewall, IPS, IDS, blah, 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 ADT, Perfender, whatever. It's like, I don't care how good that is. If it still requires a human to go, no, or yes, or click on that link in my email, you're getting pwned. That's just all there is to it. So what can we start doing? We need to start educating. We educate our employees on what their job duties are. We educate our employees on what to do like those bank uh, uh, tellers. If I would have gone into Beirut and stuff, you know, with a machine gun and a ski mask, I was gonna have a very bad day because those tellers were trained to respond to that. They were able to respond to that. Tellers know how to deal with things like this. This is scary. Well, not those guys, because we're adorable. But those gun thingies are bad, right? We all know that's bad. But we're not training our employees that these guys are bad. And those, especially that guy in the upper left, Darren's sort of sketchy, sorry, Darren. But it's like, but, the, but these other devices. We're teaching them be aware of the uh, bad guy with a gun, but not the geek with the USB drive. Both of them can destroy your network and your company, but we're only training them for one. Are you training your employees and letting them know that they're part of your information security program? From the CEO to the mailroom, one of their job descriptions and one of their job duties is information security. And if they don't know that, and they're not familiar with that, that's your fault. That's not theirs. Train them and make them understand that. You've trained them enough for them to do the job that gives them a paycheck. Let them know part of them getting that paycheck is training them to be security conscious and, and familiar with uh, information security and that they're a part of that team. Also, educate them about these things. Those are terrifying because I'm not going to put those in the lobby. I'm not going to put them in the bathroom. I'm not going to put them in the parking lot. No. When I go on an engagement, I come with a stack of envelopes and a marker. I walk by somebody's desk. I see what their name is on their nameplate. They're not there. I write their name down on the envelope. I put my USB drive into the envelope. I lick the envelope. I seal it. I put it on their desk. I walk away. Tell me one person who goes back to their desk, sees their name on an envelope, opens it up and sees the USB drive, is not going to put that in their computer. Please tell me one person. Okay, there's the liars in the group, good to know. It's like, what? don't play poker with that guy. So it's like, there we go, because it's human nature. You may be more security conscious, not trying to pick on you. It's like, but you, we're just not security conscious. And trust me, how hard is it to get USB drives to malware eyes? Three different conferences are giving them out. I love, I love the freebies. It's like, you know, it's like you don't have to buy USB drives anymore. If you're buying a USB drive to steal money from people, you're doing it wrong. I mean, they're just, they're there for the taking. So what do we need to do? We need to teach employees the common dangers they face, not at, only at work, but at home as well. Make them security conscious by default, not by policy. In other words, stop trying to get employees to care about your data. Employees are never going to care about your data, ever. They are still getting compromised at home through Craigslist schemes and eBay schemes and Nigerian fishermen and 419 scams and all those things. They don't know where their children are talking to and who they're talking to on Facebook or Skype or Kick or Snapchat or Instagram, whatever else they're using. It's like, and they're, they don't know how to secure their Wi-Fi at home. 
teach them these things. Teach your employees. Spend an hour lunch and learn session for your employees teaching them how to better secure their Wi-Fi at home. Spend an hour session teaching your employees how to change the privacy settings on their children's Facebook accounts. Show them the different kinds of security things they can do and for scams they can watch out for and phishing emails that they can watch out for. Guess what's going to happen? They're still not going to care about your data. But they're going to be more security conscious. They're going to be more understanding of what kind of threats are out there. So when they're doing their basic day-to-day function, they go, oh, that's not cool. I'm, I'm looking for that at home. I'm not going to fall for it here. I better talk to somebody. So you got to drive home the fact that stranger danger is, uh, is a good policy no matter where you are. So make them conscious of who's around, what kind of weird things happen when, on their day-to-day business. But also you have to create teachable events year-round, not an annual exercise in futility. You know, everybody, like, once a year, you get that little quiz online, you got to fill out the answers, multiple choice, and you can go back if you make it wrong. So if you, get, if you don't get 100 on those tests, you don't want to. Okay, so teach them more to do that. So how do you create teachable moments? I know, I'm probably going to go a little bit long, sorry. So it's like, uh, so how do you teach them those teachable moments? And people have been giving me, since I started giving this talk, and I did this just for Hacking Paris. It's never been done before in one of my talks. But I decided to actually show you what I meant by teachable moments. That's a teachable moment right there. Because I did that right when uh, Hack in Paris just started. That's me creating a karma attack with a Wi-Fi pineapple in my uh, seat right over there on my laptop. I ran it for five minutes. I had no internet connection, so none of your traffic went through me. But I guarantee you, if you went to your web page, it would have said, oops, no Wi-Fi for you. Sorry about that, with a smiley face. Because, you know, I don't want to take anybody's traffic or get arrested because that would be bad. But that is a teachable moment. Showing your employees how it could actually happen. How something like that could happen. Doing an attack like that is creating a teachable moment. Wow, see, no one really likes their vegetables, do they? It's like it's just a universal thing. Okay, so once we've done our teachable moment, it's like we got to learn how to empower them. In other words, not to empower them and say, you know, like, you're empowered. But no, you are part of this company. You're invested in this company. Start doing some of the things. So one of the ways we do that is users are not the problem. They're part of the solution. Let them know they're part of your information security team. Give your employees a way to be effective and let them know about it. That's key. Out of all the other things that are there, that is key. What that means is, do, they, do you, everybody here have an extension, a phone number that an employee can call if they see somebody suspicious or they see, even up there, I'm still not going to pay attention to that, sorry. Okay, so um, if they've got an extension or a number to call if they see something suspicious. Do you? I hope so. That's free. That's just adding another line and having someone answer it. It's like I was in a Mon Jordan breaking into a place, and the lady, the bank manager, was like, sir, you can't do that. And I'm like, you're right. I shouldn't be able to do that. You should call someone about it. That's, yeah, call some. I don't, hold on. There, yeah, you're, you're right. I shouldn't be, do, I don't know. But if you call someone, it's like, yeah, I should be, hold on. Yeah, I would call somebody. Five machines I compromised before I went around the teller line and then she got a little upset because there was a stack of money there. Now also, enforce. Employees must feel valued and management must take security seriously. When I talk about enforcement, I'm not talking about enforcement just for the employees, but do your, uh, but do your employees see the uh, policies being forced to the CEO level? If your upper management doesn't buy into it, how are they supposed to? You have to show them that upper management takes it serious because if the CEO doesn't have to uh, do the same policies, then guess what? The guy who reports to the CEO doesn't have to do the same policies. And if that guy doesn't have to do the same policies, the guy that reports to him doesn't think he has to do the same policies, and you have no policy. It has to be enforced evenly. Now, I'm going to skip ahead to one more thing. Visibility is sometimes all that is necessary. Does everybody in your company know that your team exists? That information security is actually human beings that, that are there? I play Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Anybody, anybody play first-person shooter games? 
Anybody play games in here, or am I just the only kid around here? Okay, cool. So it's like, so you know, this is how I play Advanced Call of Duty. You know, it's a shooter game. It's like, I play very simply. Pew, 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 America, pew, pew, pew. You know, I'm just running around, just shooting everything. It's like, and then what happens? I die. Yeah, you know, I spawn later, and as soon as I spawn back, guess what I'm doing? Pew, 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 America, you know, just running around. Now imagine if they put electrodes on me that I got a thousand volt jolt every time I got shot. How would I play that game then? Pew, pew. Pew, pew, pew. America, pew. Pew, pew. It would, it would change just a little bit, right? Because there was a real world repercussion to what happened online. You have to teach your employees when an incident happens, when they download a virus, they click on a phishing link, visit their workstation. Show them that someone is there and someone is watching. And you're not just going to educate that employee. You're going to educate everybody around trying not to act like they're watching that employee get disciplined. That's how you do that. Now, I'm going to end it on one simple thing. Um, I hated the TV show Breaking Bad. I hated it. It was a horrible show, people. Why was the bad guy so happy? Our job is to make that guy have a horrible day. He shouldn't be that happy. Your job is to make them work for their compromise and make them pay for it afterwards. That's what we should be doing. And that concludes my rant and my talk and my visit. Adieu, Edvita Zane. Goodbye.